we're going to have a look at how we can find the general term in a pattern. We're going to start by generating a pattern from the general term. So let's, we've done this quite a lot, let's have a look at n squared. So that means whatever your value of n, your term number is, you're just going to square it. So you'll start off by saying this one, n is 1, so you'll get 1 squared, which is 1. And then here you'll have 2 squared, because n is 2, and that is just 4. And continuing in that way, we can finish off. Now, if we look at a slightly more interesting pattern, say n squared plus 1, we can, of course, um, go and do it in exactly the same way. And say, OK, for this one, I'm going to take my n squared. Is, n is 1, so it'll be 1 squared plus 1, which gives me the answer of 2. But I can, of course, shortcut it, because I've already worked out what n squared is. n squared is 1, so all I have to do is take that n squared and add 1 to it. So it's going to be 2 here. Here the n squared is 4, so I add 1, it's 5. 10, 17, 26. Now, the thing I actually am wanting us to do is I am wanting us to be given this and be able to figure out the general term. So let's imagine I hadn't had that. How would I be able to figure out what it is? Well, hopefully I can notice the relationship easily between these and see that this is just one more than one squared. This is just one more than two squared. This is just one more than three squared. And so for any term, it's simply going to be one more than that term number squared. Let me give you one to try for yourselves. OK, so have a look at this pattern and see if you can figure out what the general term is. Pause the video and try it for yourself. OK, hopefully you saw quite quickly that this is just two times that, this is two times that, this is two times that. So each of these is just two times that, which is this squared. So in other words, this is two times five squared. So your general term is going to be two times n squared. Now imagine we want to work out what the nth term in this pattern below will be. So what we want to see is here we've got the n first term. n is 1, then n is 2, then n is 3, then n is 4. What we're trying to do is figure out how did we get from 1 to 5 and 2 to 10 and 3 to 15 hoping that it's very easy for you to see that the relationship between 1 and 5, 2 and 10, 3 and 15 is just that each time you've multiplied 1 by 5, 2 by 5, 3 by 5. So if I were to ask you for what is term number, I don't know, 10 let's say, you'd immediately be able to see that that's just going to be 10 multiply by 5 and that'll give you 50. So what will the nth term be? It'll just be n multiplied by 5. And we know we can write that nicely as 5n. So let's have a look at this one. Uh, OK, so again, we want to look at the term number 1 and see that that's 0 over 1. Term number 2 is 1 over 2. Term number 3 is 2 over 3. Term number 4 is 3 over 4. Term number 5 is 4 over 5. So before we get into term number n, let's just talk about term number 10. Can you hopefully immediately see that at the bottom of term number 10, you will actually have just a plain old 10. Because at the bottom of term 1 you had 1, bottom of term 2 you had 2, bottom of term 3 you had 3. What will you have in the numerator, right? In other words, in the top there? Well, you can see it's always just 1 less. So this will be 9. 
So now let's do the same, but in the general language of n. In the general language of n, at the bottom, you will have exactly the number n. What do you have in the numerator? You just have one less than that. You have n minus 1. So your general term, your term number n in this case, is n minus 1 over n.